Watch this. Day 114 in the 2021 legislative session. That's four days from record tying territory. But the end may be now in sight. Lawmakers are putting in long days during these final days at the Idaho State House. A new round of vaccines are coming, and this one is for the kids. We spoke to some local parents and their children to see if they'll be getting in line. As anyone in the TV business will tell you, sometimes reading is hard, but at least we don't have to read law language out loud and quickly. We're listening to and learning about Idaho's chief clerk of the house. And without objection, we'll return to the eighth order of business. Just before seven last evening. First reading and reference of bills and joint resolutions. The house is at the eighth order. Chief Clerk of the House, Carrie Mullen, readied herself. In the House of Representatives, House Bill 394. For a long reading. An act relating to effective dates. Amending Chapter 3, Laws of 2021 by the addition of a new Section 2, Chapter 3, Laws of 2021 to declare an emergency and to provide an effective date. You see, because this session is stretched into the first week of May. 2021 to declare an emergency emergency and to provide an effective date. The timestamp on most of the late added bills by the addition of new section chapter 9 laws of 2021 to declare an emergency and to provide an effective date has to be changed and laws of 2021 by the addition of a new section 2 chapter 10 laws of 2021 declaring an emergency date provide an effective date in order for them to go into effect by July 1st by the addition of a new section 6 chapter 11 laws of 2021 to declare an emergency and to provide an effective date to do that those bills have to be amended one by the addition of a new section, chapter, ch section 4, chapter 18, laws of 2021, to declare an emergency and to provide an effective date. And to do that, the House has to pass House Bill 394. Of a new section 5, chapter 19, laws of 2021. A big umbrella bill, which references all the bills to which this would apply. 2021, by the addition of a new section 3, chapter 21, laws of 2021, to declare an emergency and to provide an effective date. And to do that, the title of the bill has to be read. Section 8, Chapter 22, Laws of 2021, to, to declare an emergency and to provide an effective date. Out loud. Amending Chapter 27, Laws of 2021, by the addition of a new Section 2, Chapter 27, Laws of 2021, to declare an emergency and provide an effective date. All 10 pages of it. 21, by the addition of a new Section 2, Chapter 28, Laws of 2021, so, to declare an emergency and to provide an effective date. On this May the 4th, we bring you not the Revenge of the Sith, but a return to the Order of the eighth. Many chapter 31, laws of 2021, by the addition of new section 3, chapter 31, laws of 2021, to declare an emergency and to, pro to provide an effective date. Many chapter 32, laws of 2021, by the addition of a new section 2, chapter 32, laws of 2021, to declare an emergency and to provide an effective date. Many chapter 33, laws of 2021, and that by the addition of was new section just 3, chapter the beginning of the 30 minute and 19 second reading of just the title of House Bill 394. Chief Clerk of the House, Kerry Mullen, read at that pace for 30 straight minutes. Ugh, and if you thought that was a long time, well, here we are on day 114, four days away from tying the all time record for longest legislative session ever. There was a whole collection of legislation passed today at the Idaho State House, but depending on who you asked about it, it was either good progress or it was a rushed effort. Some lawmakers say they have concerns with the sudden fast pace, while others say today marks major accomplishments, meeting goals that have been set all session long. Joe Paris, of course, following this whole packed day. And Joe, where do things stand right now at the Capitol? Well, Brian, lawmakers are still meeting at this hour, and if it's anything like last night, they'll probably be there for several more. Uh, last night, Monday night, Idaho lawmakers were at the State House just past 8 o'clock, uh, working through several pieces of legislation. I'm told that there's a very similar schedule for tonight. Uh, depending on who you ask, though, at the State House, some people have said it's very successful. Other, as Brian said, rushed. Now, I spoke with Idaho House Republicans that say that the recent work is really the ending effort of a long session full of hard work. Speaking earlier with House Speaker Scott Betke, he says there are four major goals that the House Republicans accomplished as recently as this morning. Here's what he has to say about the big accomplishments for Republicans. Significant income tax relief, complete with a refund check, a transportation package to address the growing pains in our, in our road systems in the state, as well as property tax relief, and tidying up uh, the, you know, the things that we learned last summer with regard to the emergency declaration.
So there's a lot of bills that are flying from the House to the Senate to the governor's desk, but there is concern, namely from Idaho Democrats, about the property tax bill that passed the Idaho House this morning and is already on its way to the full Senate. Some Democrats are really of the belief that because in 24 hours this went from initial introduction to passing the House floor, that quite frankly, the 26 page complicated bill might not have been read by everyone. And some lawmakers believe that there were lawmakers this morning voting on things they didn't fully understand and could have consequences down the road. Democrat Representative no Steve one, Birch weighs in. Everything that they were voting on and absolutely no one had a full grasp of what the consequences, particularly the financial consequences of that bill will be on uh, cities, uh, counties, and homeowners and businesses for that matter. Some lawmakers said on the House floor this morning, quite frankly, they did not have enough time to read into this bill and they're concerned how fast it's going. It did get to a Senate committee where it passed on a six to three vote. It is now onto the full body of the Senate. We will see where that goes. Eventually, the governor would have to sign off on any major measures there. The plan is again is to meet late into tonight and then come back tomorrow afternoon to finish out some other business. There is hope from lawmakers that after tomorrow, they could go home and recess and until Monday, giving the governor his five days to veto any bills. From there, Idaho lawmakers would have time to react to any possible vetoes. Now, while the major focus today and tomorrow into next week is finishing the session strong, lawmakers are looking back on what they're calling a unique and, of course, challenging session. Well, this has been a, a difficult session. Uh, obviously, we've had some some issues. Uh, you know, we've like, expelled a member. <laughs> and uh and have done those things in the aftermath of the pandemic so there's been complications this year but i think by and large we we, we uh, fulfilled our responsibilities and done them in a pretty good way this is a legislature that is so disconnected from the people they represent that is so ensconced in its own power um that it is, it is, it, this is what we wind up with, is bills that actually don't serve the best interests of, of voters, but do serve the best political interests of the people who control and manipulate the legislative calendar. So we'll be keeping a close eye on that property tax bill as it goes through the Senate and assumably to the governor's desk. Brian, of note, there's a lot that it does, but of note majorly, it does raise the homeowner's exemption by 25%, something that some lawmakers say is a good first step. But already, Brian, people are telling me at the state house they know that the stage is set for next year to take on property tax in a more meaningful way as well. Yeah, that has to be addressed and every year. It seems like that has to be addressed, but boy, quite the tale of two different cities you hear from either side of the aisle and that outlook on how things went this session or how things are going. Thanks, Joe. Well, the Senate not exactly quiet today. Remember that last month that veto proof bills or a couple of them passed by the legislature subsequently vetoed by Governor Little. That would be Senate Bill 1136 and House Bill 135. Both had to do with shifting emergency powers away from the governor that Little believed threatened the safety of Idahoans and the Idaho economy during future emergencies. Well, the Senate seemed to be not so veto proof for both bills, failing to pass the first override attempts last month. And then today the House version followed suit by just one vote. So no, emergency dec disaster declarations will not be limited to 60 days and the governor will not be prohibited from suspending Idaho code during said emergency. But that won't be the last we hear of emergency powers limitations during this session even though we're in the final days. As Joe mentioned earlier, as you heard uh, Speaker of the House Bedke mentioned, the House introduced three new bills yesterday that would enact parts of House Bill 135. All three were passed by the House today and once again are in the hands of the Senate. The session also interrupted and prolonged by a House Ethics and Policy Committee hearing in the middle of last week, which ended in the resignation of Representative Aaron Von Ellinger. He was and still is accused of raping a 19-year-old intern. The sexual assault investigation by Boise police continues, but it was during that hearing when the accuser, Jane Doe, faced questions from the committee and Von Ellinger's attorney that had a lot of people questioning why she was made to testify publicly in person in the first place. We heard from Jane Doe's lawyer last Thursday who told us the committee was ill prepared for a hearing of this caliber, saying her client having to be there added several more layers of trauma to an already traumatic experience. So why was she there? 
The House Ethics and Policy Committee chair sent a letter responding to that question to our partners at the Idaho Press. And in it, Representative Sage Dixon explained, Jane Doe actually appeared at the hearing willingly. But that's only because they say even though they tried, Jane Doe was never actually served a subpoena. She showed up anyway. You might remember her telling the committee because while they had a job to do, so did she. The reasons why they tried to serve her with a subpoena range from, well, they weren't sure she would show up on her own, to they believed it was important to establish her credibility, to the need to have a full record of the events in question, even though they already had her full written and recorded testimony. Besides that, subpoenaed, there was, besides that, they subpoenaed all the other witnesses, and they wanted to treat all witnesses equally, they said, especially since it had been said that they had been accused of treating the accuser more favorably than the accused, and by whom we don't know. The committee also felt the accused deserved the opportunity to face his accuser, even though this really wasn't a court of law, but rather a hearing on whether Von Ellinger's actions were unbecoming of a representative. They say they struggled with the decision but made it in light of the information they had at the time. Perhaps in light of what happened at the hearing and immediately following her appearance, with Jane Doe being chased out and down the hall despite the demand to keep her identity private, struggling with the decision, in hindsight, seems like they got off easy and may be worth considering going forward. A COVID vaccine approved for teenagers in time for the fall, maybe by next week. Well, does that mean Idaho parents are going to sign their kids up to get it? We asked a few. We're also asking you, not necessarily for your COVID vaccine thoughts, but for your questions and comments about the show. We'll also take your complaints today, I guess. But with all of them, try to keep them short and to the point. Text them all to the number on your screen, 208-321-5614. Be sure to include your name and the hashtag the 208. We're going to share and respond to a few at the end of the show. Seven laws of 2021 to declare an emergency and provide an effective date. Many chapter 158 laws of 2021 by the addition of a new section three. Chapter 158 laws of 2021 to declare an emergency and provide an Still effective going. date. Many chapter yep, 159 laws of 2021. I believe at this point, Chief Clerk of the House Kerry Mullen, on about page chapter five of her 10-page prolonged pronouncement, reading the title of House 24, Bill 394 yesterday evening. So she's about 15 minutes into her 30-minute soliloquy slog that is of legal ease. Say that three times fast. Believe Believe it or not, not even her longest recital this session. She read the entirety of a 16 page bill earlier this year. Usually by this time of the 40, session, though, she's used to lobbing around law lingo like a lot. But I mean, look at this thing. It's like somebody just spilled a boggle game on the piece of paper here because she had to read all of this and it's just all jumbled together. She is not used to reading that long at the end of the day. This is Carrie's fifth session as chief clerk. She was a journal clerk for four years prior. As chief clerk, she also creates the agenda each day for the floor, runs the voting machine, and advises the Speaker of the House, Scott Bedke, on parliamentary procedure. So she does a lot with that, along with reading a lot. Speaker Bedke told us Carrie is so prepared for her job, highlighting the numbers, hash marking the page so she doesn't lose her place. He says they are lucky to have her. 
many states have a of a robo reader, you know, a text to voice type machine. And uh, well, <clears throat> we don't need one of those, I guess, at this point. I mean, she will wear out, and I'm glad that uh, uh, most people waive the, the the reading. But if she has to read, she can read, and she can read well for hours. Let's just hope it doesn't come to that. Remember, Oregon legislature, they have one of those robo reader things. And Carrie said she's always been an out loud reader with her family, reading to her kids. They prepared her for this. But does she read like this all the time? We wanted to know. Well, kind of. She said sometimes when she's reading to herself, she has to go back and read again because well, she read it too fast. But thanks for what you're doing, Carrie. So as of today, only those 16 years and older can get a COVID vaccine. The Pfizer vaccine is the only one right now on the market for those in between the ages of 16 and 18. Last month, they requested FDA clearance to allow the use of COVID-19 vaccine in children as young as 12 years old. That decision could come as early as the beginning of next week. And while some parents are counting down the days until they can get their kids vaccinated, others still in that kind of waiting period, wanting more data before making a decision. Katya Stepovic has reaction from local parents and a medical expert on this topic. He wants to make sure that he gets one. He says he wants to participate in whatever will help the greater good. So. Janet Kravitz is a mother of two boys, one age six and the other age 12. She says her 12 year old is anxiously awaiting the day he can get vaccinated, but they still won't be first in line once the vaccine becomes available to children her son's age. For the Pfizer vaccine, that could be as early as next week. Well, I'm all about it, but there is that hesitancy and I think it's just the overload of information. It just even though I don't believe that it's going to harm anybody and I don't believe it will harm him, I still don't want to be the guinea pig. I think that's kind of human nature. And Kravitz isn't alone. I can understand the hesitancy from the standpoint of how quickly it rolled out, but I wasn't concerned with that, just going with the idea if we have this many people being vaccinated, it wouldn't be in anyone's best interest to put out a product that was going to kill off or make sick multiple of their customers. Andy Deal's 17 year old daughter gets her second dose of the Pfizer vaccine today. She's 17, has a driver's license and a boyfriend and they go do things with people and I can't control what she does, but I can at least give as much protection as I can for when the mask comes off. We're really just looking at it as a keeping, helping everybody else stay safe, not just ourselves. The risk of your child getting COVID and the side effects and the long term effects of that are so much higher than the vaccine. Alicia Lachiando is the Associate Medical Director for General Pediatrics at St. Luke's. She says she understands parents wanting to have the most information as possible when dealing with a child's health, but says the data is there and to trust it. This will have been tested on tens of thousands, if not more of kids. Um, and of course, we now have data um, for hundreds plus million people. Laciando adds that with the presence of new variants commonly carried in children, she strongly encourages parents to get their children vaccinated before the school year. Would you rather get the disease or get the vaccine? And in this case, it's pretty darn clear the vaccine is the safe way to go. Kids don't really show symptoms and so they could just be walking around spreading it. Uh, kids, y'all, I always describe them as like Petri dishes walking around um, and so that's an important group, I think, to vaccinate so that they're not spreading it unknowingly. Now, I do want to add that I did hear from a number of parents who say they're completely opposed to getting their children vaccinated, but unfortunately, they didn't feel comfortable going on TV. So if you are one of those parents, we would love to hear from you. And also, Brian, another important thing to note is Laciando says that this could be vaccine season, so to speak, for some of these age groups. So for parents to remember to schedule any other vaccine appointment out at least two weeks before and after the COVID vaccine. Brian. And again, we're still kind of figure out how long this COVID vaccine lasts. Could be six months, could be a year. So again, stay tuned to all the research that's being done. Thanks, Katya.
amending Chapter 167, Laws of 2021, by the addition of a new Section 2. Chapter 167, Laws of 2021, to declare an emergency and provide an effective date. Many Chapter 166, Laws of 2021, by the addition of a new Section 5. Chapter 168, uh, Laws yeah, of I, Okay, I was just trying to find my place. She's, yeah, it's, she's still going. That's Carrie there, still reading. But boy, who a soliloquy slog of legalese for sure. All right, let's, let's switch subjects. Here in Idaho, we like to pride ourselves on being kind, friendly, and of course, welcoming, right? Unfortunately, we can't say the same thing for our ability to take care of our great state. Forgive us for jumping on our, jo our soapbox right now, but you kind of feel like you have to after seeing this because this is so not Idaho and it's kind of disgusting. This picture taken last month at Kirkham Hot Springs, west of Loman on the banks of the Payette River. You can see the trash piling up in the public restroom, someone even putting it inside the toilet. Last fall, officials with the Boise National Forest warned they were considering closing the nearby campground because of this ongoing problem and apparently well, that message fell on deaf ears because, as you can see, it is still happening to an abundance. And if you don't think they won't close this popular location, think again. Remember Skinny Dipper Hot Springs? That's been closed for close to five years now because, well, we couldn't keep it clean. Social media shaming has already started with the post being shared hundreds of times since this morning. And maybe that will help convince some people that this isn't how it's done. Hate to break it to you. White claws, not native species in Idaho's mountains. Pack it in, pack it out. It's that simple. So our public lands can keep uh, being enjoyed by everyone. We're going to have more from Kirkham coming up tonight at 6.
effective date, amending Chapter 287, Laws of 2021, by the addition of a new Section 2, Chapter 287, Laws of 2021, to declare an emergency and to provide an effective date, amending Chapter 288, Laws of 2021, by the addition of a new Section 7, Chapter 288, Laws of 2021, to declare an emergency and to provide an effective date and declaring an emergency. And that's it. Carrie Mullen finished it 30 minutes and there were still 40 pages of that bill that they didn't require her to read, which is good. But real big round of applause, although she didn't get one in the House yesterday to Carrie Mullen, the chief clerk of the House, reading that 10 page title of House Bill 394. Legislature continues. Let's get to some of your comments that you sent in today about what's going on at the legislature. Let's start with this one, though, about the COVID vaccine. Hi, Brian. My 12 year old daughter will be getting her COVID vaccinations as soon as it is available. Her mom, my daughter, is a nurse. We believe in the science. Please have your children vaccinated. Let's keep the schools open, says Kathy from Star. Does it surprise anyone that our legislators are passing laws they haven't even read? Good grief, says Kevin. 26 page bill on property taxes introduced and passed through uh, the House today. Way to go, legislators. Waste an exorbitant amount of time on unnecessary things like critical race theory, then push through bills that haven't been thoroughly vetted. What a waste of time and our money, says Susan in Meridian. And we do want to give some props to Shanti Alcelite today for doing this, the Star Wars text crawl. His idea for the legislative title read didn't expect to find something to smile about from this historically long legislative session. Well, we managed to do it. Thank you for saying so. See you tomorrow.